Hello, friends, and welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for being here with me, particularly on this extra juicy episode. Uh, here in New York City, as I am filming, we've got a thunderstorm happening, which is an extremely rare occurrence. So, I don't know, probably doesn't mean anything, but I am extra excited to have the juice of the thunderstorm. Um, but know that I think this might be the first time my two-year-old dog has heard a thunderstorm because they're so uncommon in New York. So she has a little bit extra to say, which is a little bit on theme because I have a lot to say today about social media and capitalism and verification and clout economy and all sorts of things that are really juicy and important and interesting conversations at least i hope they are interesting conversations for you if you are here because hopefully you either are a small business owner or are an aspiring small business owner and that's what i'm here to help i'm here to help you navigate small business ownership in the modern economy without losing your humanity sacrificing your values or burning out So that's what we're here to do. And today we are going to dig into all things blue check. So in case you have somehow managed to escape what I'm talking about, the blue check is a, an icon, a symbol that is used on Facebook and Instagram. TikTok has also has its own version of it, but essentially on social media platforms, there is a symbol. It is usually a check that indicates this particular page or account or handle has been verified. Now, from a straight consumer perspective, what this tends to verify or what this tends to mean is this person is famous, this is real, this is important, this is legitimate, this is better or higher quality in some way, shape or form than an account that does not have a blue check. And part of that is because these social media platforms in large part are playing off of a clout economy, right? The, instead of obviously dollars have a role in social media and potentially even more so with this updated information about subscription, subscribing to get verified, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Money is not the only currency, so to speak, inside of social media platforms, right? The number of followers you have, the amount of engagement you have, the num- the amount of attention that you command is also one of the currencies that you have available to you as a creator on a social media platform. And so that is one of the things that we're touching on is clout economy. When we say clout economy, what we mean is the currency of clout. So the currency of clout are things like number of followers, fame, having the blue check, those are the things that just like you saying, are you showing, I have $10 million in my bank account, I have $150,000 in revenue this year, allow you to say, my business is successful, or I'm rich, or right, those are the currency metrics that allow you to say, I have this value in this type of economy. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the clout economy. So some things that I want to cover, what the hell is the blue check? What does it mean to be verified on social media? Important information about what we know and what we do not know about the new subscription, about verification, about the blue check in general talking about a little bit about the news meta subscription verification process, and then going into some information about what it used to take to be verified, what it means now, how you can get verified now, some considerations about whether or not it's even worth it for you as a small business owner to pay to get verified, quote unquote. Um, It's not even, you you do get verified and we can go through what the verification process is. Um, And then I do want to touch on some of the pros and cons and some of the criticism that has come up i did to, to there were kind of there was one piece of 
information that particularly sparked this episode. And then I, that piece of information led me to posting a poll on my stories asking how people felt about this verification you can subscribe to get the blue check thing. And the feedback has been interesting so far. It's only been up for a couple of hours, but the feedback and the messages that are coming in have been interesting so far. Um, so we want to touch on all of that. That's where we're headed. I hope it's useful. If you haven't already subscribed, this is a great time to do so. If you know you want to come back to this, save this episode, save the link, pass it along to a friend who you think would benefit from it, and then we will get right into the goods. So I want to start first with what inspired this episode. A former mentor of mine, one of my absolute favorite mentors, uh, a woman named Alexandra Roxo, posted that she essentially felt buying a blue check was peak capitalism and that previously it seemed like there was actually some validity to having a blue check and made a comment about like yeah you know i'm only human so yes i'm judging you if you get a blue check if you pay for a blue check something to that effect and it was a really interesting thing to read. So Alexandra has had a blue check for, I don't have any idea how long, but I think the whole time I've known her, I worked with her, I don't know, five, four or five years ago um, in an active capacity. But it was really interesting for me seeing the statement that being able to buy a blue check is peak capitalism because, frankly, no shit. But the implication of being able to buy a blue check being peak capitalism is interesting because it suggests that there's a difference between being able to buy a blue check versus being able to quote unquote earn a blue check, which is why I did some research on, I had some of this information already, but I wanted to go th back through and see, okay, what actually was required before you could buy a blue check? What was required to get one? And is it different, and how different is it from a capitalist perspective than being able to just straight up buy it? This conversation is one that is honestly going to fascinate me, and I would love to hear from you. Your thoughts, if you disagree with me, if you if you agree with me, great. I would love to hear from you too. But especially if you disagree with me um, and are capable of being a kind, lovely human, I think everyone who listens, I think you are. <laughs> I think that is cool um, and kind of a given for all of us here. But if you're a dick, I am, <laughs> I have boundaries and I'm not going to talk to you. But if you disagree with me, I would love to have a conversation about this because I'm not attached to my beliefs. I want to present some information, share my beliefs, and we're going to go from there. Because what I do believe, what I firmly believe is that we are in changing times for social media. I don't think social media is dying. I feel pretty certain about that. I don't think social media is dying. I do think it's evolving, as everything is. But I think we're in a more active evolutionary phase. And so I think we're going to continue to see interesting pivots. And as always, the small business owners who are most flexible and adaptable and creative are going to be the ones who see the most success. So that's what I want to help you be. And that's what I want to help you do. Um, okay. So let's talk about what the blue check is. If you exist on social media, I guarantee you have seen this. If you follow someone who is famous, a celebrity, a famous author, a famous artist, a musician, if you follow uh, an institution, I'm thinking about museums right now, so like the Met or the MoMA, any of these famous accounts likely have a blue check next to the handle. So when you go to their page, you will likely see a blue check. Now, depending on who you follow, you might already be seeing other people who are not famous who have blue checks. I have no interest, I'm not trying to hide anything. I bought a blue check, so it uh, Instagram gave me the option a couple of days ago, and it takes you through a process where essentially you upload, you tell it your legal name, like on your ID, 
And then you upload a photo of the front and back of your ID, government ID, passport, that sort of thing. Within 24 to 48 hours, they say, okay, we could verify that you are really you, or we could not verify that you are really you. And if you are able to be verified, then you get the blue check. It's $14.99 a month. It's a subscription. It was originally, so it was originally rolled out through Australia and New Zealand. And when they did beta testing over there, Instagram, I'm speaking more to Instagram because that is more of where I have a data set and where I have knowledge. Um, If you have information about Facebook, I would love to hear about that and read sources because I'm always going to fact check anything that comes in. Um, But... When they tested it over there, one of the perks of the subscription was that you got increased reach. So in a similar way that you could pay, that you can right now pay for an ad or you could boost a post and get increased reach, that was one of the features of this $14.99 a month subscription. Because of some feedback they got, they made an announcement, Meta, Instagram's parent company, made an announcement that they were not going to include increased reach as part of the subscription. So at least publicly, that is not supposed to be something that is included when you pay $14.99 a month. I did it because I am curious and I'm going to test everything so that I have at least anecdotal evidence for you that I can say, hey, here's what I did. And if I'm going to, if I have clients who are going to ask me about it, which I know I am, if people are going to ask me about it, I want to at least have firsthand experience so that I can give you at least my experience paired with the publicly available and sometimes privately available data that I have access to. I want to be able to do that. So I bought the blue check. Um, It only got verified for me I only got verified today and got my blue check um, at the day that I'm recording this. So I haven't noticed any differences yet, but I'm going to watch and I'm going to see. And I will be reporting back. So the blue check essentially indicates this is real. What it really is at its core from the back end of Instagram or Facebook, what it really is, is saying we confirmed that this account is run by who it says it is run by. So if it's an account for the Museum of Modern Art in New York, this really is run by the marketing department of the Museum of Modern Art in New York. If this is Brad Pitt's Instagram, we have confirmed via Brad Pitt uploading his ID, this is really Brad Pitt running this account. Now, obviously, they might have, you could have social media managers and other people, but that at the core is what verification is about. Instagram is clear to note, um, hang on, I have the notes here. It's clear to note, it is a way for people to know which accounts are authentic and notable. Verification badges are not an endorsement from us, nor do we consider them a symbol of importance. So it does not indicate Instagram agrees with it. It does not indicate it is right. It does not indicate it is valid. It basically indicates that it is the real person or institution and that it is notable, a.k.a. famous, or has clout. Now, in this context, we are talking about famous, not just in movie star, famous athlete, Olympian kind of way. We could be talking about famous as in, in your particular niche. You could be a famous yoga instructor. You could be a famous Peloton instructor. You could be a famous editor. You could be a famous anything, right? You could be a famous coach. You could be a famous consultant. So notable, I'm, I'm going to use notable and famous interchangeably, recognizing that there are limitations and there's nuance and that using them interchangeably is not an entirely accurate situation. I'm doing it for the sake of clarity of listening to this podcast and not recording a novella for you to consume. As always, if you have questions, thoughts, feedback, I'm very open to it. So that is at the core what the blue check is. Hang on, pulling back up the notes to make sure we hit everything. That is what the blue check is. That is what being verified on social media is from a literal meta Instagram, Facebook perspective. Now, as I touched on a little bit already, what it means though for consumers is often different because again, when we're talking about social media, we are existing in a clout economy, which means that if you have the perception of authenticity, 
the perception of validity, the perception of fame or prestige or success that has value in the cloud economy and that whether or not Instagram is giving you increased reach or selling you, right? Whether or not Instagram or Facebook does anything to benefit you, you having that blue check is likely to impact consumer perception of your brand or your business. And if you doubt me, I just want you to consider what happens naturally in your brain and your body when you see an account with a blue check. When you come across a new account, you see someone shared something, you're curious, you wanna go check it out. What automatically happens when you see a blue check? Or when you see 10,000 followers, 100,000 followers versus 10 or 100 followers? What happens when you see that someone has a Forbes byline, they have a Forbes logo or a Fast Company logo or the logo of a famous, like a big company you've heard of and that's someone they've worked with. What happens to you? What happens to your perception of that person, that brand or that business in that split moment when you see that logo, that follower number, that blue check? You might be the exception to the rule None of this is binary or, yeah, none of this is binary, but many people have the response of increasing their trust, their esteem, their perception, their positive perception, excuse me, of a particular brand, business, account, website, etc. based on these clout-based factors, which is one reason that the subscription, again, even if Meta has or has not been decreasing engagement to convince people to buy things and sell back your reach, even if that is, whether or not that's true, in fact, I'm not going to say even if, whether or not that is true, there is value, there is potential value in having this marker, at least as it stands right now. That said, it is something only time will tell whether having an increased prevalence of blue checks and the increased availability of blue checks. God, I can't. Sometimes I can't believe that I'm <laughs> really talking about this. But that this is serious. I, I am really talking about this. This is my business. This is your business. And um, considering whether or not to have a blue check is going to be a it's going to be a conversation we're going to be having. And uh, so here I am having it and hopefully providing information, insights, and resources for you on the front end of you navigating this decision for your business. So (laughs) basic supply demand, if blue checks become more prevalent, if they become easier to get, which they already have, will they become less valuable in consumer perception? Maybe. Think probably is a safe bet, but that isn't something that's something we can make predictions about. Um, I can also say though that there are a lot of consumers out there who are not nearly as attuned to the inner workings of social media from a marketing and small business perspective. And so I do feel confident that they're, depending on your audience, your ideal customer base, there is likely to be a decent life cycle of the value of having a blue check. Okay, quick uh, side note, quick sidestep into what we know versus what we don't know. Because you may have seen, if you have paid any attention to this, um, a lot of Instagram gurus and folks who have built their businesses on teaching you how to use Instagram for marketing your small business, talking about how Meta, Instagram's parent company, is decreasing reach, viewership, story views, reach, engagement, so that they could drum up interest in people buying the subscription when they launched it. That might be true. As far as I have seen, as I am recording this on April 1st, not April Fool's. None of this is April Fool's. 
Um, I hate April Fool's deeply with every fiber of my being. But as far as I know, there is no confirmation that Meta made the plan to decrease engagement so they could sell it back to us. Does it make logical sense? It does. Is it possible? Yes. Would it surprise me? Not in the slightest. But we don't know. One thing we do know that I already touched on is that Meta has confirmed they took away the feature of buying the subscription, the verified subscription, that explicitly said you will get increased reach by buying this. They took that away. That is not a feature currently publicly listed as a part of the subscription. Does that mean it's true? No, it doesn't. Um, I've had enough experiences of seeing Meta publicly say one thing, seeing Adam Masseri, the head of Instagram, publicly say one thing, and then from clients or friends in the industry who have been to Instagram meetings, been to Instagram headquarters recently after those conversations, I've heard enough moments of active lies and deception um, that I'm skeptical. So, which is one reason, again, that I did buy, buy the blue check, because I'm curious. I want to see, is there going to be any difference in my viewership? Is there going to be any difference in my engagement? If I don't change my content, if I kind of keep everything else the same, I want to do this experiment and see what is up. One thing I know for sure, this isn't even my, in my notes, but please do not think that buying a blue check is a substitute for content strategy, effective content creation. Um, I have a post going out that I, the the graphic says something to the effect of like chat GPT. You can't chat, chat GPT or AI your way out of your business problems. And the same is true here. You can't blue check your way out of low engagement. You can't. Well, I think, I think <laughs> I might be wrong, though. Good content is always going to convert better. So just please Please continue investing in content. Please continue investing in your content strategy. Um, please. I have a really great April content ideas post that went out today. Uh, well, today as I'm recording. So it's already out as you are listening. Um, go check it out. It walks you through a very simple content strategy then gives you enough ideas to have content consistently for the entire month. So there you go. Go use it. You're welcome. Whether or not you buy the blue check, please go use that. We do not know, though, if Meta has been trying to lower engagement to get us to buy the subscription. We do know that there's no guarantee that buying the subscription will give you increased engagement. We do also know that the verification process is submitting. OK, two, so there are two ways that you can get the blue check. One, the old way now, which is to submit, again, your ID, front and back of your ID government issued ID um, where your name on your Instagram account matches the name on your ID. And if you are going about it the old way, you had the ability to add links to articles or other resources that would essentially prove I am notable, I am famous, my account is notable, my account is famous. So those were the main two metrics that they were checking for was are you the real person or entity you're claiming to be and are you notable are you famous are you well known are you highly searched for um one note there that i actually love to see is that they do not consider paid or sponsored media content as sources for review um not so fun fact about a lot of influencers and coaches and consultants like people who are celebrity-esque in that space if you see most of the media logos that you see on those brands' pages are bought. Not They are not earned media. They are paid media, to borrow some uh, PR and advertising terms. So they are not actually markers of legitimacy or newsworthiness or quality. Um, you can buy that. Fortunately, it seems, Instagram took that into account. Um, that's a new, I hadn't seen that. A few years ago when I looked into this. So that's, I think, is a little bit newer um, with the rise of influencer culture, which is very exciting to see. Um, that's how you could get verified for 
the old-fashioned way without paying for it. There's not a particular follower count. You could have 100 followers in theory and get verified. Um, but those are the metrics. You can now get verified by paying $14.99 a month and submitting your ID front and back, a photo of your ID, making sure that the name on your account matches the name on your ID. And then you pay $14.99 a month. And right now the benefits are you get the blue check, you're marked as verified, you get access to a real human being if you need customer service or support for your account. And I need to look up, I think those are the main two benefits right now. Um, there, there are very few benefits for $15. So we're, that's, we're experimenting and I will continue to report back. Um, we already covered a little bit of the true benefits of verification. So from the inside, from Instagram, there aren't really, you get the blue check. According to them, they are not promoting your content more. They're not saying your content is good. But from the consumer perspective, people think it means legitimacy. And we'll continue to kind of see how that evolves because it's we're still in the early phases of that. Um, to go into a little more detail about what did it take to be verified and get a blue check before you could pay for it. Because this... So my mentor, Alexandra Roxo, who mentioned, like, it feels like peak capitalism, it used to be legitimate, I, I had to go back and fact check myself and be like, oh, did it used to be legitimate? Because to some extent, sure, not everyone could pay for it. But the question is, what do we mean legitimate? Not everyone, you couldn't just pay for it. You couldn't just buy a Forbes mention and a Fast Company mention, as many people do, and then say, here, I'm legitimate, I'm famous. You couldn't just buy followers and appear famous. You had to, in some way, quote unquote, earn those followers. Now, I am the big, I am a huge proponent of how challenging or huge, I don't know, I, I'm deeply aware of how challenging creating good content is, how hard it can be to grow on social media. And if you have genuinely grown an audience and a following, that is amazing. I support you. I celebrate you. It is hard work. And all it took at the core was for you to be authentic, as in not authentic branding, be real, represent a real person, registered business, or entity. And this is me reading from Instagram. You needed then to be unique, as in represent the unique presence of the person or business. Only one account per person or business may be verified, with exception for language-specific accounts. Your account must be complete, it must be public, and have a bio, profile photo, and be active when you apply, means at least one post. And it must be notable. Your account must represent a well-known, highly searched for person, brand, or entity. We review accounts that are featured in multiple news sources, and we don't consider paid or sponsored media content as sources for review. That's, those are the qualifications. It's not about, are you well qualified? Are you, is your content right? Is your content interesting? Is it valuable? Have you added to your community or benefited anyone in any way? That's not a metric. So from the stance that it's peak capitalism to buy a check, it, it's, I mean, it's also kind of peak capitalism to play the game of Instagram where you are verified because you play the game of Instagram and because you have some degree of fame, notability, or notoriety. This is clout economy, which is a growth of capitalism. It's the same thing. Now I can understand frustrations if you quote unquote earned it and it's giving you benefits and now you feel that it's being diluted and you will lose some of those benefits. I can absolutely understand frustration. And like I said before, is there a good chance that this will become, the blue check will become less valuable? Certainly. Absolutely there is. But we'll have to see. <laughs> um, now, an important side note, I'm not saying that folks who have a verified check prior to being able to buy it didn't contribute. Again, my mentor, Alexandra, 
I adore her. I think her work is amazing. I think it's incredibly important. She makes beautiful things. She makes art. She's contributed so much over the years. She's written a book. She's like, she has created a beautiful body of work that has helped so many people on and off of Instagram. So do I think that folks who are benefiting in Instagram in that way deserve perks? I do. I absolutely do. And to imply that that is better, I, I have my questions about, I have my asterisks about. And especially because Instagram plays in the cloud economy where fame and followers are often unfortunately more important than quality or contribution, that's where I say, you know, most of the people I know who have the blue check are amazing. Many of the people who have the blue check before buying it I don't want to be an ass, but play more in the space of fame and followers and fluffiness than they do in quality and contribution. And this is one of the great frustrations that my clients and people in my community have is that they want to play in the space of nuance. They want to have complexity and they don't want to just play the game of quick reels and quick this and quick that and keep playing with the algorithm. They don't want to do that. They want to make a difference and make meaning. Now, you can make a difference. You can make meaning and still have quick reels and still work well with the algorithm. All of those things are not one or the other. They're not mutually exclusive. But, and again, the people who I know personally who were verified before being able to buy it, for the most part, they really do contribute a lot. They do make amazing things that also work well with the algorithm algorithm or they started their account earlier when it was easier to grow an account and grow fame and grow followers. There are so many different situations. Every situation is unique, but is it like wrong <laughs> or peak capitalism to be able to buy a blue check? I don't know that it really is any more than what Meta was already doing. Maybe it's calling a spade a spade more so than it was before, where it was a little bit more veiled, but it's kind of the same thing. Now, one very important con that I want to mention, I've touched on, but I want to say it explicitly, about being able to buy a blue check is that, as I've mentioned, for a lot of consumers people on social media, people on Instagram, seeing a blue check creates this instant sense of this is true or this is more legitimate or this is valid. And if that is no longer being fact-checked at all by Instagram, I have my questions and my skepticism about Instagram's fact-checking policy, but they have at least noted that buying media mentions was not a way to get verified. So there was at least some degree of saying you need to have some legitimate sense of authority. With being able to buy a blue check, that's going away. And so in a space where there have already been so many creators, so many influencers who are kind of our snake oil salespeople, who are not in integrity, who don't have authority in the areas that they're claiming to have, being able to get this additional marker of prestige or authority or expertise or automatically, that automatically create a degree of customer and consumer trust, I think has its dangers. Um, likely not for you if you're listening to this. I'm not really concerned to anyone who listens to my podcast. I'm not really concerned for anyone who listens to my podcast um, being a snake oil salesperson. If you are, though, and we're converting you to the light side of business, hi, welcome. I'm so fucking happy you're here. Um, but that is a thing to consider, right? And it's something that as 
most of what I talk about is from the small business owner side, but also as consumers, I want all of us to be able to have this awareness of marketing tactics, social media practices, what's available, so that you can make more informed decisions as a consumer with who you trust and where you spend your dollars and where you invest your time and your money and attention, because it matters. It matters to your quality of life. It matters to what's happening in your world. And so that I think is my biggest con. Yes, it's late stage capitalism and it's uh, dark. <laughs> it's dark. But could there be benefits for your business? Yes. I'm not saying it's guaranteed. I don't think this is a universal 100% go buy a check right now. And again, I'll keep you posted. If you're not following me on Instagram, at Chelsea.Quint, look for the blue check. If you're not watching the video version of this, I winked very awkwardly because I'm very bad at it. Um, didn't try to be awkward. That's just how it goes. So enjoy that. Go watch the video version. If only for that, you can scrub to the end and see the delightfully cringy wink. But consider whether that increased consumer perception could benefit you. Consider making sure to follow me on Instagram where I will update you on everything that Meta confirms, suspicions, what we know, what we don't know, and what I am experiencing from being verified. Um, and if you have any questions about this, any thoughts about this, reach out to me on there. Send me a note on Instagram and we can chat about it. I would absolutely love to hear from you. And I think that is what I have for the time being. So with that, thank you as always for listening. If you know someone who might disagree with me and want to get into it, share this with them. If you know someone who would benefit, share this with them. It means the absolute world to me when you do that. So thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. My aura ring just said it's time for me to start winding down for bed. So I am going to listen to it. Um... If you need a promo code for an Aura Ring, it's not an affiliate thing. Aura Ring, just so you know, Aura Ring doesn't, there's no perk for uh, giving people your discount code, but I think I have four more of them. So if you want a discount code for an Aura Ring, um, I'm obsessed with mine. I've had it for about two months and couldn't be more thrilled. Um, so not an ad, not a promo. I get nothing, <laughs> um, which I mean, I don't affiliate for anything that I don't actually believe in. So I hope you trust my affiliate recommendations either way, but this is not an affiliate recommendation. I'm just obsessed and the notification happened to go off as I was sitting here closing things down. So thank you for hanging with me. I adore you and I look forward to talking to you soon.